first of all, I want to thank everyone for coming um, today. It's great to see a lot of new names uh, and great to see a lot of the, you know, people that we saw last year and seeing everybody again. Uh, you know, our, our goal with, with the new Micro Nanotechnology Education Center is really to bring everybody uh, even more closer together with this community, um, try and collaborate more effectively, network uh, even more, um, and try and build this community even uh, more than it is already. I mean, I've been involved with MNT for eight years now, uh, and this is like one of the best communities that I've ever been involved with. Um, everyone's really great to work with. And hopefully what happens is that we evolve a little bit through this national center, um, but at the same time, you know, take all the all the stuff that we've learned from in the past and assimilate it into, into this center. Um, so we are the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. We just recently came up with this new motto. We are the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. Um, you know, that, that is sort of a joke, but our goal really is to bring everybody uh, in the micro nanotechnology realm and, and work with you and support you and you know, figure out what can our center and our center team do to, to support your programs. Today you're going to hear from uh, three of us. So I'm Jared Ashcroft. I teach chemistry at Pasadena City College. I'm also the PI for the uh, Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. Um, here's my email address and I promise you if you email me I'll get back to you within a day, two days. Um, you know, I'll make sure to contact you and just say, all right, how can I help you? How can I support uh, your program? Or, if you need to set up a Zoom meeting, um, you know, we can do that pretty much uh, any day of the week um, and, 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 you know, make sure that, that we're communicating effectively. Um, Billy Copley is going to tell you about our seminar series uh, once, once I'm through with kind of introducing you to the center. Then Peter Kajaranoff is going to introduce uh, our Talking Technician podcast and our journal that we're going to be trying to start, our peer review journal that we want to start through the, through the center. So we are a community college leadership team, um, you know, with these ATE national centers, uh, the ATE program has, you know, really been encouraging, let's get community colleges to in the leadership roles, sort of leading these centers. Um, so we have Peter, Peter from Portland Community College. Uh, we have Mel Cassette, who does materials education from Edmonds Community College. Uh, Nita Habibi, who's um, does a lot of nanobiotechnology, who's at Alam, uh, Northwest Vista College, which is in San Antonio. Sorry, Edmonds Community College is just outside of uh, Seattle. Uh, Greg Kepner, who used to be at Indian Hills Community College in Iowa, he's going to be working through Pasadena City College. Um, but we have great experience, like all of these, um, every single one of our co-PIs has, has led uh, centers and projects um, in the past. In fact, most of them have led uh, support centers or resource centers. Um, you know, so we're very experienced, uh, have a lot of knowledge and very multidisciplinary as well, um, bringing in more disciplines into the micro nanotechnology sphere. Um, you know, so I'm really excited that we have such a great community college leadership team. And we have four year partners, uh, nonprofit organization partners, you know, so it's a, it's a very large center. I think we have 11 total partners and about 30 different individuals who are, who are working on the center uh, with us. So our goal, uh, grow the micro nanotechnology technician workforce by fostering academic and industry mentorship between existing micro nanotechnology partners and educators developing prospective community college micro nanotechnology programs. Um, and we really wanna do this through four sort of steps. Uh, we wanna coordinate a national approach. You know, how can we coordinate all of the different entities within micro nanotechnology into sort of one repository that, that we're really sharing out through our national center. Um, have a lot of professional development. This is probably one of our strengths going in is we have so many strong professional development that we've, uh, opportunities that we've developed over the last, you know, eight, 10 years. Uh, you know, SCME has their clean room workshop um, or micro sensor workshops that they have, NAC has their NPDP, there's the RAIN network. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, professional development opportunities. And now we're gonna try and even infuse more um, for more disciplines into this national center. You know, to me, one of the most important things that we could be doing is how do we recruit uh, and do outreach and not just recruit, but how can we um, have people join our community and then keep uh, continuing within the community. Um, let's try and get our, our micro nanotechnology community more diverse. Um, let's get more underrepresented faculty and students participating. 
uh, and let's, you know, in a way mentor uh, all of these different uh, people and get them into leadership positions for in, in five years, whenever we're really discussing, all right, how, how are we going to, uh, who's going to sort of be in the big leadership positions? Let's see if we can transition from, um, you know, some of the uh, experienced mentors that we have to um, some mentees that we've kind of trained in order to, to, in a way, kind of maybe even take my place um, and, and make it so that we have a community of leaders uh, within the micro nanotechnology uh, sphere. Uh, probably another one of the big, huge, most important things that we need to do is make really strong industry and education alliances. Um, you know, I keep saying to everyone, the, the real success of this center is going to happen if we have industry engagement. Um, and by that, I don't just mean industry kind of coming to our meetings once, once a year and, and telling us, hey, you know, this is what we want to do, like constant contact and constant communication with them and have the industry lead and say, you know, this is what we need you to uh, in, in your programs in order to educate the students so that they're ready for what's coming down five years down the line or 10 years down the line. Um, industry, I think, is a lot more aware of the emerging technologies and industry really needs to, to tell us, you know, this is what you need to be teaching in your programs at this point. Um, I'm really excited tomorrow to hear from Jessica Gomez and Mike Rousseau, um, you know, with their keynotes, because that's going to be two industry, um, you know, leaders who are going to sort of share their knowledge and what's going on in the industry aspect of micro nanotechnology. Um, so that's, that's vital, you know, industry students, to me, those are the two vital Kind of entities that we really have to support and, and figure out how do we engage uh, the most with. So developing a coordinated national approach. You know, I just I've I watched a, a slide that you know Matt's been telling everybody watch this death by PowerPoint slideshow and it's actually a really great TED talk. Um, and in it it says don't ever put more than five or six pictures. Um, so in this one I've put like twenty mainly because I just want to kind of hit on the head. We have a lot of different programs and a lot of different curriculum, a lot of different professional development within the micro nanotechnology sphere. Um, I mean, if you look at SCME, they've actually had two different logos and two different names over the last 10 years, which is a little bit confusing. Um, you know, a lot of these aren't even really around as much anymore. Um, and how do we take all this information and all this material that's been generated over the last 10 to 15 years and make it in a very easily accessible, um, easy to understand place. You know, if I'm a, if I'm a community college faculty member and I don't know a lot about micro nanotechnology and we're trying to recruit, recruit you into participating in this program and they go and do a web search and try and find materials, um, how are they, how do they know uh, which are really good materials? How do they know which materials are sort of validated? Um, what we would hope to do is kind of make a repository uh, with a website that we're going to be creating over the next year and put all the material accessible in one place. Um, and I hope that everyone will work with us over the next year and, and, you know, sharing what your curriculum is, sharing what you have and be willing to even look at it. And that way you can say, oh, you know, we like this one. Uh, maybe this, this, this lab isn't so great. Um, or, you know, where's our gaps? Where's our competency gaps at? What are we missing? And what do we need to sort of embed and infuse in our professional development and curriculum program so that we have a, a much more complete center? Um, so that's going to be a huge part of, of our goal is coordinating a national approach to micro nanotechnology education. Develop professional development um, to, to enhance knowledge and abilities. Uh, the one thing I love about micro nanotechnology is how many broad disciplines that we're involved with. You know, it's, I think that we've really been focusing the, a lot on semiconductors and electronics um, over the last eight to nine years, and it's been awesome. Um, how do we infuse a little bit more nanobiotechnology? I, I went to Rice University, and that's where I did my PhD. And that's all I did. I took nanoparticles and I conjugated them to antibodies and to other biomolecules for use in medicine. Um, how can we bring in that aspect of nano, which is really important, and, and have it a part of our center? Uh, how do we take materials science, you know, with like Mel Cassette and Matt EDU up in Edmonds Community College and infuse some of the materials education within uh, the micro nanotechnology realm. Um, the photonics program from MPEC uh, and Greg Kepner, what they've done at Indian Hills Community College and their optics center, you know, laser technology uses a lot of nano. So 
the thing that's really awesome about Micro Nano is that we can support a lot of other ATE programs and centers and not just be focused on, on one specific type of Micro Nano. So we're going to be having professional development opportunities that, that span a whole bunch of different disciplines. Um, and then how do we take these converging technologies and, and have them talk together and work together in order to, to develop programs that could be multidisciplinary so that students, whenever they finish, have more, more options um, for industry jobs uh, once they're done with our micro nanotechnology programs. So uh, we'll talk a lot about our seminar series uh, once Billy starts um, in a couple more slides. Conduct strategic outreach, recruitment, and retention of traditional and underrepresented faculty and students. And I really do think that um, this proposal is very faculty uh, driven. You know, like we're trying to develop professional development opportunities for faculty with the idea that if we can support you in building a program at your campus or in your region, then that's going to increase the opportunity for students you know like we can't just take all of our funds and have oh we're going to give internships and these classes and different opportunities for students because that's not going to scale well in the future you know once the funding runs out then the students wouldn't have opportunities what we need to do is work with uh, industry and community colleges and regions that have specific nano applications that are involved in it and figure out how can we target putting programs and getting faculty into those community colleges to sort of develop these programs so that we can have a, a bigger impact on more students. So, so the grant is much more faculty professional development um, driven as opposed to here's student opportunities. Um, we do have supplements that we're going to be writing and we've been working with uh, like SCME and AIM Tech at uh, Northwest Vista College and writing some undergraduate research or work-based learning proposals so that we can support students in that fashion with our supplements. And, you know, so we want to have faculty participate in our center and our, and our participant support. Um, and at the same time, how can we develop at least some programs that directly help students, not just helping them though, but that we can actually study and see how effective the different programs are. Because um, if we study and figure out this is how we can make an undergraduate research based learning program more effective, then we can share it out and more campuses and more people across the country can kind of copy uh, or, you know, share out with, 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 with what we do. Can create deep industry educational alliances that support student success. Um, there's uh, you know, and this is Matt Pyle's map that they've been doing at SCME, their industry map that they've been working on over the last year. Um, you can see we have micro nanotechnology jobs all over the place or industries all over the place. Um, you know, just in Southern California and Northern, more Northern California, you know, sorry, it's stretched a little bit. You know, there's a lot of micro nanotechnology jobs. Um, and these are, you know, not even close to as many as we have. Uh, you know, you can see down in the South, we have a lot of different opportunities up in the, uh, Northeast um, and kind of the Midwest, uh, you know, there's all sorts of different industries out there that are looking for technicians. And I've been meeting with a lot of the industry leaders and all of them say, you know, we need to uh, have more technicians that we can hire. Um, and it's, it's a huge need for, for their industry. So, you know, we're going to reach out to industry. We're going to be engaging with them and, and try and develop programs alongside of them. Um, we're going to have a business industry leadership team uh, and the idea of a business industry leadership team is that industry actively participates and, you know, not, not tells us, forces us what to do, but advises us on, you know, this is what you need to be doing and teaching for the, for the future micro nanotechnology education students. So how can you help, um, you know, share your curriculum with us. If you have a program, you know, let us know about it. Uh, I just actually had a great meeting with a, a college down in Louisiana that has a nanotechnology program that I've never even heard about. And it was exciting because I'm like, oh man, that's great. I, I did not know that there was this program down there. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to go out and find where are the programs. And then once we find them, we want to talk to you and uh, figure out how can we support what you're doing. Um, you know, if you need help, maybe grant writing, or if you need help, some professional development. Um, you know, we, we want to be able to help you and support you. and and have you a part of this community and, you know, share all of your curriculum and, and program designs with us. Um, you know, again, share your ideas with us. If you have a, a 
really cool idea that, that you want to try. Um, and that's one, one area that, that, you know, we do have a pretty large supplement. So if someone came to me and says, I'd really love to try X and I need $50,000, then, you know, we can say, oh, yeah, let's write a supplement grant and see if we can get at least some startup funding for you so that you can try this uh, idea at your, at your community college. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want to, we want to support new ideas. Uh, I always think that everybody has three great ideas in their mind at any time. And it's just a matter of getting everybody to share their great ideas and, and then supporting what those great ideas are. If everybody does this, then we're going to have an awesome center just because all the unique ideas that each person has is going to, it's going to build and grow this center to be uh, as, as optimal uh, in impact as possible. Uh, join a sub team. And, you know, this is, to me, this is actually probably one of the most important things, you know, like be actively engaged in the center. Um, you know, there's a lot of times we have professional development and we have these meetings and they're really great opportunities. And I have a really good time. I meet all these great people and then we leave and I don't see anybody for the next year, or we have maybe 20, 20 of the participants that really continually with the conversation and come to the meetings, um, join the Minty Sig group, uh, but don't just join it. Don't just be a part of the database. Um, come to the meetings and listen and come to the meetings and talk and share what you have. Um, join one of the sub teams. You know, we have the industry team, which is uh, led by Craig Kramer. We have outreach and recruitment. That's Greg uh, Kepner and Billy uh, Copley. Um, program building or professional development. That's Jim Smith and Bob Ehrman. Um, mentoring. Uh, that's Mel Cassette. Uh, and uh, curriculum and development, uh, which that's Marco Corelli. Then we have the distance education uh, team. So distance education is going to be led by uh, Nancy Luaji and uh, Rick Vaughn. You know, so we have a great leadership in each of these sub teams, but you know, it doesn't matter how great the leadership is. If we can't get participants to come on a regular basis and, and share their knowledge and share their ideas during these, these sub teams, um, they're not going to be as effective, you know, like we want you to be a part of our sub teams and join and, and share your ideas. Um, so, you know, today in the sub team groups, you know, try and get actively engaged and then not just here, but whenever we have our meetings, which is about every two weeks, three weeks, um, come and participate, you know, sign up and, and continue the conversation and just be consistent and in, in being engaged. All right, so we're going to talk, I'm going to turn it over to Billy Copley, who's going to be talking about our, our upcoming events for what we're going to be doing this summer. Hi, my name is Billy Copley. I'm the center manager for the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center grant. Um, this year, the MNTEC has uh, started a, what we call a summer seminar series. It's a series of talks designed to get the word out about the center's activities and individual programs within each center. Each session will feature a program or individual that will have either a hands-on workshop or other learning opportunity available in the summer of 2021. These sessions started on July 15th um, with the next session taking place on August 5th. Greg Kempner will be doing the August 5th session and he will be talking about, um, in conjunction with the Indian Hills Community College, he'll be offering a photonics professional development opportunity. Uh, they will be discussing an introductory fundamentals of photonics workshop that includes the theory of light and lasers along with practical hands-on laboratory activities. Tanya Faltons is from NanoHub. Um, NanoHub is a free online resource and community for nano educators and students that contain over 6,000 multimedia resources, including interactive simulation tools, learning modules, homework assignments, online lectures, and full courses. The presentation will demonstrate some of NanoHub's functionalities for educators and showcase a few interactive Jupyter notebooks, simulation tools, and educational modules. Um, August 19th, Pete Rayner and Jim Marty from the University of Minnesota um, will be talking about um, public health and safety when it comes to nanoparticles. So their session, um, they will go to the, uh, sorry, they will go to the Minnesota Public Health and Safety um, building and learn about uh, the health and safety when it comes to the use and and exposure of nanoparticles. Then they'll go over to the University of Minnesota Nano Center 
and make nanoparticles and then characterize them. On August 26, Malkasat and Greg Kempner, um, in conjunction with Mender Connect, will be doing a session where they share information on the Mender Connect project and how institutions wanting to submit an ATE proposal that are new to ATE can apply and participate in the Mender Connect program. Presenters will also share information on other funding opportunities available through ATE. Kendrick Davis will be talking about the state of STEM education. His session will focus on the presentation of key data points on STEM education and barriers to STEM success with a specific focus on underrepresented subgroups in STEM, including Black, Latinx, Native American, those with disabilities, and foster youth. Additionally, he will use case studies to illuminate and discuss challenges to diversification within the STEM community. You can go on. There you go. On September 9th, Bob Ehrman and Osger will be talking about uh, CNEU and their um, programs, including RAIN, NPDP, and others that they will have available in the summer of 2021. Paul Weber from the Utah Valley University will discuss virtual reality in the classroom. In his session, Paul will discuss his program at the Utah Valley, Utah Valley University and the use of virtual reality in the classroom. UVU received an ATE grant to develop a cutting edge nanotechnology program and that program started in 2020. Meta Habibi will be doing the session on September 23rd and hers, she will be talking about Northwest Vista College's fourth summer nanotechnology workshop for high school students and high school educators. The AIM Tech grant, um, the AIM Tech grant offers sessions of atomic force microscopy, field emission scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, hands-on training at the Kleberg Advanced Microscopy Center at UTSA for students and educators. And I just want to note that it is free for high school students. Uh, September 30th, Brandon Rodriguez from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory will be talking about science and uh, education outreach efforts by NASA. The session will detail the science and education outreach efforts taking place at NASA in both the K-12 and internship programs. He will detail how current NASA research shapes activities and lessons for schools and how those can be implemented by educators nationwide. On October 7th, Matt Plyle from SCME will be talking about his uh, 2021 MEMS workshop and the upcoming undergraduate research opportunities at the University of New Mexico. Jared mentioned those earlier. On October 24th, we're going to hear from our own Peter Kazarnoff, co-PI of MNT EC. He's going to present on resources from the Pacific Northwest region for community college faculty interested in micro nanotechnician education. He will also preview the upcoming peer review journal sponsored by the MNT EC Center and the upcoming podcast. Kate Alcott from Neotech will be talking about how she works with active duty service members transitioning into um, civilian careers and her session will take place on October 28th. On November 4th, and this will be the last session, um, Nancy Loaji from Normandale Community College and Rick Vaughn from Rio Salado College will be discussing the use of distance education tools that they use in their programs and how those tools can change how students learn. Please register for the series. Registration, you register once and you get into all of the summer series sessions. Um, and we will put that into the chat. Um, and now I would like to turn things over to Peter Kazarnoff to talk about journals and podcasts. 
Hi, Thank everyone. You. Thanks so much, uh, Billy, for talking about our summer seminar series. I really hope to see a bunch of you during these uh, summer seminar series presentations. And there's a link in the chat box for you to be able to sign up and register. So I hope to see you then. Uh, my name is Peter Kazarnoff. I'm faculty in engineering and engineering technology at Portland Community College in beautiful Portland, Oregon. And I'm formerly the center director for Shine, the uh, micro nano ATE regional center up in Seattle, Washington. Uh, but now I'm down at Portland um, and working with uh, the MNTEC uh, grant as the lead in the Portland region. I'd like to uh, talk with you about uh, two of our initiatives. Uh, one is the Talking Technicians podcast. In the Talking Technicians podcast, we're going to interview working technicians in uh, the micro nano industry and detail who they are, what they do, and how they got there. In addition to talking with working technicians, we're also going to have industry minutes where we'll uh, discuss industry news and events for both technicians and educators. The purpose of the Talking Technicians podcast is to give students an idea of what working technicians actually do and what it's like to be a working technician, as well as to give educators an idea of what their students do once they go off into uh, the workplace. And if uh, you have got some alumni who are currently working in the micro nano industry, uh, please get in touch with me because I'm always looking for uh, students uh, who've uh, graduated and have jobs uh, in order to interview and talk about their experience. In addition to the Talking Technicians podcast, I'm also the lead on the Journal of Micro Nano Technician Education. Um, we are planning on introducing a peer-reviewed journal for both uh, community college as well as university uh, educators uh, to publish in. This is an opportunity um, for community college educators uh, to publish things like their current curriculum modules or lab experiments, as well as uh, university faculty uh, to publish uh, labs, which could be done in a community college uh, setting. In addition, uh, we're looking for submissions from education researchers about uh, the most up-to-date practices on uh, technician training uh, focused in the micro-nano uh, area. Authorship uh, in this journal will help community college and university faculty advance in professional development and uh, help with yearly reviews as well as um, tenure applications. Uh, authorship in the journal could be cited in future grant proposals. Uh, and it's also an opportunity for uh, university and community college faculty uh, to collaborate so um, we are currently in the process of building uh, the editorial team uh, for this journal, and uh, we're looking for a diversity of voices uh, to help out with this initiative. So if you're interested in being part of a peer-reviewed journal, uh, you can uh, get in touch with me or get in touch with uh, Jared, um, and we'd love uh, to have your input. So um, this concludes our formal presentation. Uh, Jared will now uh, take any questions that you have about the MNTEC, the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. All right, thanks, Peter. Um, does anyone have any questions or is there anything in the chat that anyone's seeing that they would like for us to, um, to address? <clears throat> 